Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals, such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady, who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Wilson, host of Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Phil Rosner, also known as Avanash. Hello. Hello. Welcome. So we're going to be talking today about Souk. I used to teach at Edward Milne, which is just down the street from where you are. Mm-hmm. How long have you lived here? 18 years now. Where did, where did you move from? We moved from Langford. Oh. Yeah, it was a situation that uh, my wife at the time and I, our kids had just finished high school, so they were kind of out on their own, and we thought, it's time we can get out to Souk. So we, we packed up and we moved out here and never looked back. So I moved here uh, 19 and a half years ago, and Souk and Langford have really changed. What changes have you seen out here? In Souk? Oh, enormous. I mean, you know, uh, the the one thing that really comes to mind initially is uh, I remember when we first moved here, uh, going out the back door at the house that we had, and it was quiet. It was really quiet. It's getting a lot noisier now. <laughs> right, and the roads uh, coming out, like uh, I just noticed all the, the paving going on in the yeah. gas station by the high school. Yeah, growth. You know, it's like um, um, I, I actually ran for suit council last year, and there was there was a lot of issues that were brought up about. Well, should we, you know, should we entertain more businesses or what type of businesses? And um, I have my own kind of spin on that, which uh, I wanted to try and promote. I mean, for when we first came here, there was talk about having a bypass road. Okay, so that you miss the center of town, and I don't. It it, it got stalled along the way. I mean, they put in one Wadhams Way, but uh, that's only part of it. It was supposed to extend out both ends. It would be wonderful if that would, you know, would have happened because what could happen then is the the whole center of town could be developed beautifully, with little shops. That we could have more walking areas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it doesn't appear to be happening at this point. So. Uh, you know, it's interesting because Lady Smith um, put a big highway, put the highway wide mm-hmm. right through the center of town and they bypassed their little downtown. But I, f- I found it affected the downtown. People ended up driving right through. I think there's ways of really doing it effectively so that you can draw people in. I mean, you've got people driving out from Victoria, say, OK, so it's a long drive. Instead of going straight out the road, hey, well, let's stop, and there's some nice parking areas here, some little parks and stuff, and we can then walk into town and maybe have a, a bite to eat and stuff. And it, it could be really sweet. I mean, but, you know, this is, this is my idea. I know a lot of other people uh, presented this kind of idea as well, but it's, it doesn't seem to be happening at this point. So in terms of places to eat in Souk, there are quite a, a lot of nice restaurants Right? Don't you find? You know, I got to be honest with you. Yeah, so I hear. But I I don't, my wife and I don't really go out that much to restaurants. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're on this beautiful property here and it's like, well, and I love to cook, you know. So I I cook up some stuff and we stay here. There, But yeah, there, there are some sweet little restaurants in town here. Where do you go for your groceries then? Uh, well, we, d- I like to shop in town. Like when I say, when we say in town in Souk, we mean Souk town, not Victoria. Um, so, because I like to support the businesses, right? So uh, I like to go to Western Foods or, or you know, the other grocery store. And, uh, but there's also, of course, the, the little, uh, the, the Saturday, uh, what do you call them? Market. The Saturday market. Yeah. So the local growers will come and they'll have their stuff available then. That's great because it's mostly organic. 
Yeah. So, um, what what are the businesses that are involved in the community in Souk? Well, there's quite a number of businesses. One of the upsurges recently has been, believe it or not, breweries. And that's something that's not of particular interest to either my wife or I, because neither of us drink. But uh, they seem to have these little craft breweries, which they've set up, and there's and they've been winning awards and that sort of thing. So there's that. Um, there's um, a manufacturer for cosmetic products made out of seaweed that's been here for years. Um, I used to do a little bit of work with a lady uh, who started that. And, you know, there's this... The, the, there's a number of nice little coffee shops, uh, bakeries, that sort of thing. Do you find that the tone or tenor of the city changes in the summer? Because, like, is it touristy here? Well, again, you know, as to what I was saying before, it's, uh, yeah, it does tend to be touristy. However, I think that uh, a lot of the traffic is heading further up. You know, Like to Port Renfrew? Yeah, to places like China Beach and, and uh, you know, even Shirley District and uh, up and around there, French Beach. Yeah, because, I mean, those are, those are wonderful places. But, uh, and, but, you know, again, you know, some people will stop in town here, obviously, and pick up some supplies or, or a coffee or whatever. So do you ever go to the waterfront anywhere? Oh, yeah, always. I mean, there's whiff and spit and... Uh, Whiff and Spit's a wonderful place to go. It's right by the Sioux Harbor House, which is, of course, very famous. Um, but there's also some other nice areas. Uh, there's some beaches that are fairly close. They're pebbly beaches. They're not really sandy beaches, but... Uh, like El Ella, Beach? Ella Beach? Ella Beach is a great one, yeah. It's really great. And also, I mean, even just to go down, they, they, they set up a, uh, a walkway down in the, the local park here that goes all the way down to the water. I mean, you, you can access kind of a beach there, but you can go along the wharf. The wharf is wide open for people, and people walk along that all the time. It's really sweet. It's really nice. Do you ever see uh, uh, wildlife in the water? Or? Yeah. I mean, there's seals. I've never seen uh, an orca, but uh, they're around. I, you know, I, I've seen videos of people there who have actually had them come right under their boat, you know, like just a short ways off from uh, from Souk Harbor, you know. I do know they go by. I've seen them here. They're kind of scary. There's two two pods, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's a local... Local pods, yeah. Local pods, yeah. And um, what about in terms of um, tourism, like fishing and stuff like that? Big fishing uh, community here? Yeah, fishing is really big. I mean, it's something that's uh, covered weekly in our local newspaper, right? So they talk about all the fishing stuff. I, I'm not a fisherman myself, but uh, yeah, it's it's obviously very big. And there's there's lots of, you know, you see there's a lot of salmon, cod, and, and halibut as well. But uh, yeah. Do you go up to the potholes? You know what? I, I mean, we're on the road to go to the potholes, but we rarely go there because... Actually, on this property, we have access to the river. So it's, and in the summer, it's great. I mean, we don't have those deep potholes like they do up there, but we can we can swim right in the river here. It's awesome. Cool. Um, well, actually, when I was a teacher at Edward Milne, some of the students had t called in sick for the day. And then the next day, there was a picture in the Souk newspaper showing them at the Souk pothole. Ah, uh, sneaky. They sneaked out, eh? Yeah. So, Souk used to have a reputation for kind of being um, a bit down and out, and I think that's changing. What do you think is the reputation now? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, uh, back back when, going back about 20 years, I think it was kind of considered a redneck town because everybody was a logger. I mean, uh, one of my first bands that I played in in the early 70s, both of the guys lived out here. And they were both involved in the logging industry. One of them was a faller, right? And, uh, of course, every year they'd have the big event down on the Souk Flats here where they would... Oh, the Canada Day too, right? Yeah, yeah, where they'd climb up poles and chop trees down and stuff like this. So, it's, uh, so yeah, it shifted a lot. I mean, to a degree, I mean, still you, on a daily basis you see huge trucks going 
through souk carrying logs right but uh i don't i don't think that's happening too much really locally so i think things are kind of shifting more and more towards tourism and to towards small kind of uh cottage businesses yeah there's so to me there's uh, two groups of people out here so there's the people who have grown up and lived here for a long time right they call them old souk yeah I, this this term came up while i was uh running for council somebody said well you gotta be careful because that's that's old souk stuff and i went what do you mean old souk i don't know. i wasn't aware of the term at the time but yeah yeah there's definitely a a, a, a lot of people who are grown up here as you say and then there's the kind of the more newer community in the Sun River estates nearby? Yeah, well, this is the thing, you know. I mean, uh, as you're probably aware, Souk is, I think it's the second fastest growing community in on Vancouver Island, if not BC. When I was working in, in, the, in the tech industry, I, of course, was driving into Victoria every day and back. And sure, I, I noticed there was, you know, a fair amount of traffic, but re fairly recently, I noticed a huge upsurge. I was actually in Victoria one day, uh, very, very early, and I was heading back to Souk at around 6.30 in the morning, and it was a constant stream of traffic coming out of Souk. So it's, it's, it's only natural. I mean, we are um, a community that has uh, a lower price real estate compared to Victoria, obviously, and um, people, you know, they don't mind comparatively they, they'll buy a house out here for a lot less money they don't mind driving in and out uh, however the road is a you know is a different subject <laughs> yes let's talk about the road so one road versus two roads well it's it's a tough one I mean it's uh, and this is a real bone of contention with a lot of people in Souk is because we just have the one road um, there's some other access roads that you can you know, if, if something gets stuck on the main road that you can come through Gillespie Road through East Souk or, or whatever. But uh, for the most part, if, if something happens on the road, you can be stuck for a while. What about, um, do you think that the population will continue to change? Because uh, to me, the West Hills community in Langford kind of hijacked a bit of the development in Souk that was happening 15 years ago. I think uh, a lot of the developers now are, are starting to get a little bit wise as to the situation because they they realize that a lot of people coming out here don't have a, a you know they don't have a huge amount of money they can't spend like eight hundred thousand for for a house so uh, what they've been doing is they've been uh, building houses that have for instance a suite in the basement so that they can you know somebody can buy the house and then of course they can rent a suite. So one of the things that I thought was maybe missing in this area was a hospital or like that sort of infrastructure. Is that coming? I was just going to talk about that. Yeah. There was an agreement. Uh, they've been working on it for, for a while. Our, our uh, mayor, who is now in her third term, I think, or maybe second term, she's been a real uh, steadfast component or proponent. proponent of really kind of propping that up because it's been very hard. For instance, it took me 16 years to, on a wait list to get a doctor in Souk. <laughs> That's a long time. So, but what's in uh, recently the, uh, the province and the community have gotten together um, and there, they are going to be, there's going to be a large expansion uh, with regards to medical facilities here. Right, because everybody has to go to, like, if you want to go to the hospital, you have to go to View Royal. Yeah, I mean, even for x-rays and stuff. But uh, with a new facility, it sounds like they're really going to uh, have a lot more kind of medical uh, things that they're going, to, they're going to be able to handle. So, including more doctors. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, we, we, that is one thing I would say about living on Vancouver Island is surprisingly how few doctors there are. Let's talk about the wildlife. <laughs> Tell me about, do you see bears out here? As I say, I've been here for 18 years now. And we occasionally see a bear. You know, you come around the corner in the road up on uh, Otter Point Road or whatever, and oh, there's a bear, and he's gone up in the forest. So, but last year, first off, we had a bear in the apple tree. 
And it was like, oh, he's way up the apple tree. Okay. And then, oh, he's coming down the apple tree. Okay, goodbye. But the next day, I don't know if it was the same bear or not. I was in the kitchen here and I looked out the window and this big guy came walking across here. And I came out and I stood on the deck here and he was not 10 feet away. And he just kind of ambled by. He ate some grass and he just kind of ambled by. And I got it all on video. And he just walked up the driveway and I and then he stopped and looked at me and I said, have a nice day. <laughs> and he just kind of took off. And he was back the next day and he laid down and fell asleep right on the grass there. That's amazing. About 20 minutes. And it was it was an amazing thing because... I had never been that close to a large uh, mammal like that, animal. And it was so beautiful because it was so grounded, you know. It was, it it had this presence about it that was just really amazing. It was a very, very special day. Hmm. Have you seen a cougar? No, but I do have a story. Okay, tell me the story. (laughs) Uh, We get bunnies. Okay, the little brown bunnies, right? So um, my landlord, Mark, who lives right across the way here, he was in his kitchen early. He gets up quite early. Early one morning, and the light was just coming up, and he looked out his window, and he said, what is that? Is that a bunch of bunnies lying there? And all of a sudden, it moved, but it moved as one. And it was a cougar, and it was laying there in front of his window, and it got up, and he says it started walking up the driveway and then it just kind of looked back at him and then turned and took off. We had a cougar when I lived in Machosan near Pearson College walk through our backyard. Wow. And my son was in the backyard. Oh, wow. I don't think that they're prone to attack no. humans. No, I've heard of people with little pets, you know, sitting on their 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 deck with Fifi and suddenly they turn around and Fifi disappears. <laughs> I don't think so. But I, I have heard of eagles uh, coming down and getting Fifi. Yeah, I mean, there was a situation. Um, the puppy, who is now my dog Coco, who is now I think, almost seven years old. When Coco was a puppy in the old house that I was in, uh, I was out on the back deck with Coco. He was a little guy and all of a sudden an owl swooped down. Very close, but luckily I was there. So yeah, it was a big owl. It just kind of, and and they're, 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 I don't know if you've ever heard an owl go by, but they're silent. You know, they've got this, you don't hear the, the wings, you don't hear anything. There's this Right. Yeah. Actually, an owl flew into the side of my truck once. Oh, my gosh. At, near where we lived. And uh, so I stopped the car and I I was like, what is, because I wasn't sure what had happened, right? Yeah. And I backed up and the owl was just sitting there and I, I waited around until it was okay. Oh, cool. I do find, though, like when I go, I'm from Ontario originally, when I go back and compare the lifestyle of here versus there, we do have way more animals and birds and stuff. It's just, we get spoiled here. Don't you agree? Yeah, I do. And, uh, you know, I have a bit of a, uh, bone of contention as it were with regards where I live, because this road here that goes to the potholes, sometimes I don't know if it's people that want to get there super fast and they're going pretty fast down this road and uh, there's wildlife all around. I mean, there's, there's, there's bunnies, there's, uh, there's bears, there's deer, lots of deer. And, uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate when one gets, you know, hit. It's Because it's, it doesn't always have to happen. Yeah, well, I drive a car now that's pretty quiet and I find they don't hear me. But generally, they've become a bit habituated mm-hmm. to, like I see the deer stand at the side of the road and look both ways before crossing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're learning about us humans, right? Okay, so top three things about Souk that you love? Uh, nature. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty tight lip, tight knit little community. And uh, nature. <laughs> and your friends? Yeah, well, I mean, I got friends everywhere. 
but uh, yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot of friends out here as well, for sure. Okay, so if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do so? Uh, they can email me at Phil N. Rossner, all one word, R-O-S-S-N-E-R, -S -S at shaw.ca. Okay. And if you want more information about the soup community, contact me. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Wilson and host of Vancouver Island Time. Welcome to the neighborhood of Souk. Take care. Have a great day. Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camos in Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. Hi everybody, it's Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosin and host of Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Phil Rosner, also known as Avanash. Um, tell me, where did you get the name Avanash? What does that mean? Uh, Avanash actually means indestructible. And it was uh, a name that was a spiritual name given to me by my Sadhguru, who's uh, named Ama. She's also well known as the Hugging Saint. Oh, I've actually heard of her. So today we're going to be talking a bit about Souk. Um, and maybe you can tell me how someone from Souk got involved with the Hugging Saint. <laughs> it's a long story, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, well, you know, I've, it's basically I, I learned about Ama through a friend of mine who was in a music group with me. And my music group, uh, we did uh, song and chant from all different spiritual traditions. And she became a, a devotee of Ama. And um, I, at one point I inquired, you know, well, tell me more about this. And she gave me a book. And so I devoured the book. And uh, then I, uh, Ama comes to the Pacific Northwest every year from India from from Se to Seattle right yes that's correct so uh, so I went down to Seattle I actually um, I didn't have enough money at the time so I actually sold one of my guitars the, the my main guitar actually so that's how I really wanted to go down and uh, check it out and uh, I was blown away she's a, an incredible phenomenon like uh, and the, the the thing that's so beautiful about Ama compared to maybe some other so-called spiritual teachers is she walks the talk you know and it's it's amazing to to see what she's done in the world she's hugged over 36 million people can you believe this does, does she hug you at the event yeah every single person every single person i've seen her sit there for 16 hours straight you know, I, I mean, I've come, gone and come back, but it's not like, you know, hug, push, hug, push away. Everyone is special from the beginning to the end. And she's as fresh when she's finished as when she started. Well, that probably gives her energy too. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's all about Shakti energy when you're, when you're as totally in tune as she is, you know, then uh, it's, it's just, she has constant energy. It's amazing. It's funny because I often get asked um, by people in the real estate industry, how do you do everything you do? Mm -hmm. But I, what I found is I just do what I like to do now, and that gives me the energy. Right. Yeah. What you love, eh? Exactly. Yeah. I like working with people, and I'm very resource-based, so I like connecting people with you know, their needs, and it's not always about real estate. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I can totally understand that. Yeah. So tell me what you do exactly. Well, I do a number of things. Uh, I'm semi-retired. Well, I say semi-retired because I'm retired from the regular kind of workaday world. Okay, I was, I was involved in, uh, you know, the high-tech industry for many, many years. And uh, so when I retired from that, I decided that, hey, now I can do all the things that I like. And I'm busier now than I used to be when I was working because I'm doing, but you know, what I'm doing now is all the things that I love. And that in, includes music, obviously. And my music thing is like a triangle because I do the song and chant from spiritual traditions. I do a John Lennon thing, the John Lennon shtick, you know, with, with the whole John Lennon thing. You know, I even talk like him, you know. Do you wear your clothes while you're doing it? Do I wear clothes? <laughs> 
You don't do a Yoko Yolo thing. The, I don't do the two virgins thing, no. And um, and then I, you know, I'm I'm from a rock and roll background, so I still I, I wrote my own songs or write my own songs, so I still do that as well. So there's that. Then I have my recently launched business, which is all online, and uh, it's based on uh, what a foundation, which I call the Three Little Birds Foundation. Right, and the three little birds are basically compassion, loving kindness, and um, inclusivity. Inclusivity. So the number three in triangle is uh, a theme in your life. I guess it is. <laughs> so, uh, what's your website? My website is let's be the change dot net. Okay, so is that how you know Francis Lippman? Uh, not necessarily from that. I've known Francis for years and years and years. Um, I can't remember somebody, actually it was one of my band members when I was in a band years ago, who was a friend of Francis and she actually emailed me and she said, you and Francis should get together. I think you've got a lot of commonalities and sure enough, you know, I, we've been pals ever since and she's a, she's a wonderful person. She's so dedicated to the whole environmental scene and, and everything else that it just blows me away. So it's, it's very cool. So what change do you want to see? What I would like to see is I would like people, you know, what I'm trying to impart with my website is I've, I've written a, an ebook as well called Path of the Lotus. Okay, and basically what it's all about is um, that uh, we may have many challenges in our lives, and but it's it's we we don't have to get mired within these challenges. They, we we don't have to let them roll over us and crush us. There's ways out of that. I've been a you know a meditation practitioner for many, many years. Uh, meditation and mindfulness. And in in times of uh, despair or stress in my own life, it's it's like a it's like a life raft. You know, it really is. And I've learned a lot of techniques which uh, may not be common that uh, but our, our meditation mindfulness based and mantra i use mantra as well based techniques that, that are i've found to be extremely helpful so what i've done is i compiled those into this book called path of the lotus which i actually just got up on amazon but i also sell it from my website so i mean i have two te teenagers so they're going through a lot of change right now i find like the one thing i guess that people learn through meditation is maybe resilience what do you think yeah yeah oh absolutely yeah and not to uh, to choose your response to what's happening to you rather than to always react but to actually respond yeah exactly it's it's and you know i i can only speak of course from what's happened in my own life but i've been in situations where something has happened which normally in my past would have really caused a lot of anger to rise. But now it doesn't react in the same way. I kind of stand back and I look at the situation as it is, and I don't, there's not an instant response. It's like, it's almost like a gap, you know? You know, like like in the uh, the British underground, they say, mind the gap. Well, it's, 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 it's the same kind of thing. A, you get kind of a gap, and and you so you can kind of, Rather than just <clears throat> respond like this, you can have an opportunity to look deeper as to what's really going on. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting. I, I talk about closing the gap often yeah. with my clients. So right. uh, determining what their needs are and where uh, they want to be in terms of lifestyle. It's not just lifestyle. It's like choices uh, down the road and right. helping guide them to that place right yeah well it's a similar kind of thing right but you didn't think real estate was so philosophical <laughs> <laughs> no I mean you know it's it's all about community as well you know for sure it's um, you know the, there's a story in in, in Buddhism that uh, about a, a monk who's who's having trouble well he's He's a guy. He's having trouble in life. He goes to a, a monastery, and he and then he goes. Uh, he learns a bit of meditation. Then he goes up on a hill and he builds himself a hut, and 
he meditates and he thinks, oh, this is great, this is great. And the master comes up when the guy's not there and he burns down his hut. Because, you know, with, that's not the path. The path is to, uh, with my teacher, my Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, it's all about, we call, talk about Buddhism. Buddhism isn't just meditation for me, right? It's, um, he talks about engaged Buddhism. That is, you, you learn these skills and then you take them out into the world. And you, you impart them out into the world, right? So the guy on the hill is just benefiting himself, not society. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just totally being, you know, like it's just about me, but it's not about him. We're all connected. Uh, another term which my teacher Thich Nhat Hanh uh, came up with is interbeing. And it's just like, you know, everything is connected. And uh, this is becoming a more common thing. I mean, it, it's, it's obvious in physics, you know, as well. Everything is connected. Right. Well, like uh, your baby, when um, it comes out of the womb, knows your voice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever read uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl? No, I haven't. I think you would like it because it aligns with everything that you're saying. It's not a big book. It's one of those life-changing books that um, I find uh, helps you realize that even in the worst moment, honestly, your your end is is pretty much self-directed. Okay, so uh, when people are coming to your website, what should they be looking for? Uh, well, the, the website is actually split up into three, well... I guess three or four sections. <laughs> I all put I all put this under the, the Three Little Birds Foundation, right? And the first is, is as I mentioned, the Path of the Lotus. The Path of the Lotus is not only a book. I'm also working on a, a video e-learning course to go along with that, and uh, all the different segments are, are listed on, on. I haven't really gotten there yet. I haven't launched the video end of it. So there's that. Then I've got a section called luck now like the indian town right except it's l-u-c-k now standing for love understanding compassion kindness love it right luck now luck now so um so that's another aspect because uh there's too much of the the other side right now we were seeing it in in the news every single day right so we need to, uh, it's important to impart the, the other side of this. Um, and the, the third kind of section is, um, is all about the music. And it's music videos, not only some of my music videos, but some music videos from some friends of mine who I really like. And then I've got a kind of a blog going as well, which I haven't really, it's not going full bore yet, but uh, it's getting there. Where do you get your topics for your blog? Uh, they're, they're all related to the other things that are going on in my website. Okay. So somebody asks you a question and then you create the blog? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I've been also answering a lot of questions on Quora. I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with Quora. It's basically a, a site. It's a very popular site online where people ask questions. And some of the questions are like, well, I don't want to go there, right? Esoteric. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's it's in all different departments. And I, I kind of got hooked into people asking questions specifically with regards meditation, mindfulness, lifestyle, that kind of thing. So I've been kind of deriving some of the, the information from there. I've also kind of, you know, as you do with, with any kind of a business, you do kind of a market research thing. And I, I did uh, a kind of a, a research thing online as to what are people looking for? For when they hear, you know, what are they thinking about when they hear the words meditation or mindfulness and so and so, and it's it's interesting what I what I brought up on there. I mean, one of them was, well, will meditation help me sleep better? That was a big one. So I actually wrote another e a little ebook with regards, you know, how to use some of these techniques to get a better night's sleep. Okay, so um, as we close out, I'm just wondering um, if you could tell us again. Uh, what what's your website again? Let's be the change dot net. Okay, and if people want to call you, what's the best number to reach you? Uh seven seven eight nine two two three two five four. That's my cell number. Okay, and you got an email? Yes. Uh path of the lotus at shaw dot ca. 
Cool. Okay. So if you're interested in talking to him, uh, you've got the contact information. If you want more information about the soup area, please contact me. I'm Jane Johnston with the Bar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. Take care and have a great day. Welcome to the neighborhood. We hope you have had some insight into West Coast living. If you know of someone or some place that should be highlighted in our podcast, we love to hear from you. Please go to VancouverIslandTime.com and click on our Connect button. See you next week on Vancouver Island Time with Jane Johnston.